are you getting investors to sign the checks and deploy cash? I would say in a piecemeal basis, yes. Um, there's not as much conviction as we thought. And a lot, again, back to what I just said earlier, a lot of uh, the global investors, especially the global uh, money managers, are, are very, very skeptical still, um, whether that be on the geopolitical side or the economic side or the, the housing side, um, that still pushes them to, to look elsewhere in terms of gaining alpha. That list that we put together, we, we were trying to come up with a, a scenario where if this is the bottom, and a lot of people have said that it's close to the bottom or near the bottom, and we're not asking investors to try to catch a falling knife, but these are the stocks that we feel that you should have in your portfolio for the medium-term point of view and a way to sort of catch any sort of upside that you start to see when it comes into the Chinese market. You know, um, we, we, we feel that... You know, at, as the Hang Seng sort of reached its sort of like low 15s, high 14,000s, you know, that was an inflection point in terms of um, maybe putting weighting back on for investors that have taken up all exposure. These are stocks that we feel um, for the medium term will, will look good in the portfolio going forward, whether that be from historics or whether that be from peer group comparison or global comparisons. We still feel the narrative here for these names that we suggested makes sense that you have at least some positioning in, in the market for some potential upside led by predominantly uh, the impetus and the stimulus that seems to be coming uh, on a ferocious basis from Beijing. Andy, you were just talking about the foreign investor and uh, the kind of jittery sentiment there. Uh, do you think that the measures that have been coming through is enough to turn the sentiment around or do you think that there is more that needs to be done? No, I still feel there's more that needs to be done. I mean, as, as I said earlier, we've seen some piecemeal activity coming in for the first time in ages, and I really mean in ages. Um, some of the bigger global investors are starting to pull down models, speaking to the individual analysts and starting to get a sense of the idea um, where it makes sense to come in. But there's still a lot, lot more that needs to be done. And I feel that the market at the moment is tiptoeing and getting their feet wet a little bit back into the Chinese market. And I think you saw that um, very clearly last week, just before China Asia market went out in terms of the northbound activity activity and how much foreign investors were um, potentially putting money in. And we hadn't seen a whole full week of buying for Northbound for, for a long time. So that's encouraging. But I still feel um, that the, the bigger group of, uh, of investor base, and especially when you look at um, my portfolio weightings, are still incredibly underweight China. So I still feel that they feel a little bit more confident than they probably did um, a few months ago and definitely a year ago. Um, but it's still, they're still looking for some lot more policy support and a lot more stimulus to come into the market. Um, so we, we're kind of in this sort of no man's land area yet again, and we don't seem to be able to push out of it. It'll be interesting to see post the holidays whether some of those consumption numbers and consumer and retail spend numbers start to increase, which we are expecting them to do, whether we start to see some increased upside just naturally from an economic point of view into the market. But overall, I think investors are still looking for Beijing for the answers and for a catalyst um, to push the market higher. Uh, Andy, let's uh, talk about your stock ideas because you're saying that you know there is a inspection about uh, a broad range of stocks. But you look at uh, PDD. You have a buy call on the stock price target 164. If we could just bring up the stock for our viewers, I'm just scanning through the screen to see if uh, we have it on the board. Uh, but PDD has been an outlier, so it's not like yes, money is has. not. Yeah, I mean, it's not yeah. like money is not chasing quality and expansion yeah. and earnings in the region. I, I, it's I agree doing with so, you, but not, and and yeah. and it is a relatively crowded long, especially in the ADR form, right? Um, mm -hmm. And it is a is a is a stock that is an outlier in terms of um, its performance um, in in terms of the market onshore, um, plus um, the the upside that it's got on its global expansion. We still like this name. We still feel this name will definitely continue to take market share from its peers, um, and we would still even at these price levels prefer to hold this. Um, but in no sense of the, the expectation that it's going to be a straight line upwards. You know, the, the stock is still going to have some level of volatility to it. But from a medium term point of view, from the, all of the e commerce names, this would be our preference. Um, it is crowded, and I would say that of probably five names that we can see globally, um, which actually you're pulling up now on the screen, um, these, these names seem to be the names that uh, most global investors will look towards in terms of having a small position and a small, as I said, a tiptoe back into the Chinese market. 
um, that seems to be one of the biggest, um, the, the biggest long positions that we can see. Um, Longer term, you know, it's still likely to take market share, especially away from Barbar. Um, so we would still like to be holding that name, even though it has moved and it is an outlier in terms of outperformance compared to the rest of its uh, peer group. Hey, Andy, I just wanted to pick up on your point about uh, waiting for that catalyst to really turn things around. Is that really looking at uh, sort of a turnaround in the property sector? Or are we talking about more a certainty when it comes to the regulatory system? What do you think the catalyst needs to be? I think the property market is definitely the biggest um, the elephant in the room and, and I feel that from a retail spend point of view and you mentioned it earlier in your earlier segment that you know the retail investor in China has got to have some level of confidence back into the economy um, and that obviously stems from where the property development and, and the debted levels um, of most of the, uh, of the developers are, are are seen, um, and that is a bigger catalyst. The other catalyst I would suggest is, you know, is, is policy support. Yes, but also, rest of the world has done so so well, and it's very difficult at the moment um, to speak to a portfolio manager and start suggesting Chinese names when they can clearly get some bigger outswings in the rest of the world. And to be fair, across the rest of Asia as well. You know, if you look at the Korea market, the Taiwanese market, um, the, the Japanese market, and especially the Indian market, they've all done incredibly incredibly well. So. So at some point, maybe that catalyst is that some of those markets start to cool, especially maybe some of the US tech names start to cool. And again, we're starting to see some a little bit of divergence between the Magnificent Seven, which is maybe becoming a Magnificent Five or a Magnificent Four, and maybe that money starts to flow back in. So I don't think there's going to be one catalyst or one single catalyst. It's just going to be a series of measures, um, both on the property side, hopefully, um, on the policy side, hopefully, where it comes to national team um, and the increasing side of the national team where I expect the A shares to outperform both the H's and the ADR's but at some point as well we do feel that from a global asset allocation point of view people will have to start to look at China and take that underweight maybe to equal weight or just slightly below equal weight but definitely not overweight at this time, juncture until we see some real conviction coming through in terms of the market in terms of its performance probably led by consumer onshore.